So in this video, we'll talk about JJ coupling. JJ coupling is one of the other methods in which um, the electron spin and the electron orbit motion of the electron can interact together to form a resultant J. It is common with heavier elements, that's with a, nuclear, a larger nuclear charge. So, talking about um, atomic number 40 and above. So, in JJ coupling, the spin orbit interaction is as strong or even stronger as the interaction between the individual spins or orbital angular momentum. Recall in the LS coupling, the Russell standards, the spin orbit interaction is weak. Here, the spin interaction is strong. So, what usually happens is that um, the individual L and S coupled together to give an individual total angular momentum. Then the resultant angular momentum, capital J, now gives, is now a sum of all the small j i's. So where j i is just for one electron. So if you look at this, in this case, j i is l i, so that's for the i electron, plus or minus s i. So it is not equal to L plus S, L plus S minus 1. No, it's just L plus S. It is this that's equal to the capital L plus uh, capital S plus 1, capital L plus S, capital S minus 1, and so on. Anyway, so this is just, so which means the small j can take just two values. So let's look at an example. For two electrons in a p orbital, so pp, meaning, so this shows that we're talking about non equivalent electrons because it has been separated. If it's equivalent electrons, it will be p2. So these are two electrons, they both are in p electronic configuration. So s is out, same thing, l1 and l2, they are both 1. So the values of j for the first electron can be 1 plus half or 1 minus half, which is 3. We have three halves and one half, and we have the same value for the second electron for the individual orbital quantum number. So, we now to obtain our j, we consider all combinations of j1 and small j1 and small j2. So, j can take values of j plus 1, j plus 2, up to j1 minus j2 magnitude. Again, it cannot have negative values. Okay, so this is 3 halves plus 3 halves up to 3 halves minus 3 halves, which is 3, 2, 1, 0. And then, so this is this, let's, so we're considering this 3 halves and this 3 halves. So for this 3 half and this 1 half, that's for J1, J2, we can have 3, 2, and 1. Similarly, here, so we consider half here and 3 half here. So we have 2, 1, 2. And then the last combination, half and half, we have both j, small j and 1 and small j2 so are both half. So we have half plus half, that's 1, half minus 1. So these are the combination that we have. So the notation that we use here for the JJ coupling is when both values are 3 halves and 3 halves. So these are the possible values of at j, 3, 2, 1, 0, that we obtain here. And when we have uh, 3 halves and 1 half, we have 2, 1. We have 1 half and 1 half, we have also 2, 1. And we 1 half and 3 halves, 2, 1. And then we have 1 half and 1 half, that's uh, 1, 0. So that's that for the JJ coupling. However, so, yes, so that's majorly it. These levels will also split when we have electron-electron interaction taking place into what their J values represent. So that's that about J, J coupling. And if you look at it, sorry, the LS and JJ coupling on the diagram by hand rule the three p term so we have p2 configuration we have these terms this is the configuration so term symbol 
will be obtained here for the ls coupling and this is our the terms arising from jj coupling now we can look at this two different configurations like this because remember we said that ls coupling is for lighter atoms and jj coupling is for heavier atoms so for elements in the same periodic group for example in in the same group for example the um p the group carbon group so i think this is carbon group with, with p2 so if carbon follows ls coupling down the group where we have lead lead is a very heavy atom so the jj coupling would be observed <coughs> So, as you go down the group, you move from spin of its coupling to JJ coupling. So, that's that about JJ coupling.